Hello everyone, this is Carol from Lily Rose Blue, and this is my third video. Yes, things look a little different each and every time as I'm still learning what I'm doing. It is not fabulous, but we're going to make it work. So, again, video number three. I'm going to continue my theme from video number two about cookbooks and converting these kind of binder cookbooks into junk journal cookbooks. So the same principles will apply. I will remove a lot of pages, but I will keep the index tab pages and just add um, some of my own recipes, some recipes from family and friends. Um, gotta add junk journal goodness like scrapbooking pages, uh, old book pages, gotta make some pockets and belly bands and embellish, stamp, all kinds of things. So that's my plan for this. Video two, I told you I had two uh, binder cookbooks like this. One is going to be for one of my daughters. This one might be for my other daughter. We shall see. That is my plan. Maybe I can do two, a two for one in, in some regards, but a lovely Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. Um, I have seen more than one junk journaler convert these into junk journal cookbooks or even uh, junk journals with other themes in, entirely. You know, they've covered up this, this whole index uh, tab and, and, you know, covered up the titles and used it for other kinds of junk journals. And I may do that too. Well, we will see. So that is um, my first find for today. I went, I should say here that I went thrifting with a friend in a different town than I'm from and it's always great to be able to thrift in a new town and find gorgeous things and um, boy she enjoyed shopping for me and I enjoyed having her shop for me. She bought a few things but my gosh, my cart was overflowing, I think, by the time we got done. But this is my first find from there. Continuing on with the theme of cookbooks, uh, she found a bundle of these home cooking women's circle magazines. And uh, you can see it's from February 1977. And uh, so we picked those up. She ha has shown these or purchased some for herself in the past. I can't remember if she picked up any more for herself, but look at the gorgeous patina on these pages. Um, of course, there's recipes too and some nice illustrations. Cute little mouse there. Um, party fair. So there is a set of 10 of these. Um, so just so much fun. 1981, 77, 78, 77, some more 77s, 81s, 83. So going to have fun using these both in cookbook junk journals. And I might just use some of these pages for some other things too. I, I think the patina is gorgeous. Kind of continuing on with the theme of binder junk journaling. Look at this gorgeous book she found and gave it to me. And I said, are you sure you don't want this? You keep giving everything to me. And I think she said either she didn't need it or she had something like it. She was probably just being very kind. <laughs> But again, the same principle is true. You can use these index pages for a variety of things. But look at the pictures here. Just gorgeous. So you could keep this book as it is, 
to some extent. You could cut some of these pictures out and uh, use them for tags. Um, big tags, small tags. Look, this folds out. Oh my gosh. I just can't wait to play with this. It is so fun, guys. So fun. Look at this. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, except just admire it <laughs> for right now. But same kind of binder theme here. Uh, I love that idea. Next, I will tell you that I am from the Midwest and you got to have pigs and cows and farm life. Uh, I don't live on a farm. Uh, some of my roots, my ancestors were farmers though, so it's something near and dear to my heart. And this pig, I just thought these pigs were so cute. And it says, it's okay to huff and puff on your birthday. How else are you going to blow out those candles? So I will use this in a farm animal or farm themed, boy, it is hard to talk today. Farm themed journal, so cute. Same thrifting uh, trip with my friend. So canvasette paper, and you can tell there's some age. It's not in great shape, but who cares? because it's the paper we're after. This is, as it says, like a canvas. This feels like a paper canvas. The texture of this paper is so rich and it's so thick. And um, it's from Grumbacher, Ben Franklin, $1. Oh, I have a feeling this would cost a lot more today. Look at this yellow, um, aged patina around the edges just gorgeous stuff gorgeous never can have too much paper right and then speaking of that we found this number writing tablet i love the the, the lines of this the numbers on it could be used for so many things, you could dye it, you could keep it white, you could cut it apart, just so many options with that versatile paper. Also, uh, someday I am going to make some horse journals. I uh, have three grandkids. Uh, the oldest one owns a horse and rides for 4-H and competitions and things. The other two grandkids uh, do not own a horse yet. <laughs> However, um, they go to horse camp as often as they possibly can. And so I found these uh, folders and I thought I gotta get them. You can lead a horse to water just like you. Horses need plenty of fresh drinking water every day. So here's a beautiful horse. I should know the name of that horse. I do not, or the type of horse. Another horse and other horses. Just gorgeous. Have you caught on that I have a lot of junk journals to make yet? Yeah, I do. I do, I admit it. We also found some sewing patterns and I do use the paper inside just as enhancement to my junk journals, but I really got these patterns for the photos on the outside. So someday I will make a vintage fashion journal of some type. So there's that one, pretty darn cute. This one, don't you just love those dresses? We still have dresses made like that today, don't we? all the shoes to match. There's this pattern here. I don't know, what do you think? Some, there you go. Now I think that might be the 60s for sure. I would say overall these are from the 60s and 70s. Some other ones. Mini, mini dresses. And then here was this pattern. Um, I, I liked the, the artistry 
of this, but I also like the fact that this is a larger uh, envelope and you don't usually see larger envelopes or larger patterns like this. So I thought I'd grab this and see what that did, what ideas I might come up with. Also found at this same thrift store, and this will not uh, be in frame, uh, 17 by 14 big tablet of tracing paper. She love the sound of that. I know those of us who junk journal love different textures of paper. This is like parchment paper, tracing paper, of course, is what it is. Can't wait to play with that. Also at that trip, I think it was that trip. I, now I can't remember. This might have been from a, a different uh, thrifting trip, but I don't think so. This is Miss Pickerel on the moon. I loved Miss Pickerel books as a kid. Oh my gosh. I read each one of them over and over and over and over again. And I may read this again. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do anything with this. This was discarded from the Mitchell Public Library from Mitchell, South Dakota. Um, again, I, I don't know what I might do with this, but... I'm going to keep it. I love kids books and this brings back lots of memories. Um, this is a copyright of 1965 and written by Ellen McGregor and Dora Pantel. I loved Miss Pickerel, especially this one, Goes to the Moon. This was one of my favorite series as a kid. I also love The Rats of Nim and Stuart Little, um, The Witch of Blackbird Pond, all kinds of things like that. I think that, no, that is not. We also found tons of golden books on that trip. Prayers for Children, of course, little golden books are so popular in the thrifting world now, and this is why. Look at these illustrations. I know I'm turning this backwards, but um, this book has hardly been looked at, and so, um, look at that little boy. Oh. Um, so prayers for children, a little golden book of Heidi. Same thing, uh, this was uh, Abigail Fangman's little golden book and given to her from Judy Marquardt. So Abigail and Judy, that was very nice of you to share this book with, with us. Look at the colors. Look at the colors in this book, just gorgeous, just gorgeous. The Shy Little Kitten, I think this has been reprinted. Um, oh yeah, 75 years of Little Golden Books. I have uh, seen this uh, book much older. Um, so the pictures are by Gustav Tengren and story by Kathleen Schur. Um, the original copyright looks like it might have been back in 1946 and this is um, a 1974 although it is in such good shape I I not sure about that date look at the kittens look at the illustrations there's a mole a frog a dog a squirrel a town and then they go back home again. Butterfly Kisses, based on the song. And this is by Bob and Brooke Carlisle. Illustrated by Carolyn Ewing. Copyright 1997. Again, just gorgeous pictures. This would be a great Father's Day journal. Or pages to use in a Father's Day journal. Just gorgeous. So got that, found this older book, The Three Little Kittens and Other Nursery Tales. This is a wonder book. Uh, this was Mary Ellen Barnett's book and it was from her mother. 
look at the colors and the illustrations on the on the back the front cover um, 1946 uh, you can tell this is falling apart look at these illustrations just gorgeous I keep saying the word gorgeous but I mean it 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 applies to this also for my horse journal this is the Brayer Stable Mates series, and this horse is Starlight. Couldn't pass it up. It's a horse book. Um, 2006 copyright. So again, not, not that old, but the illustrations in this book are just gorgeous. And they're training him. His name is Midnight. or Starlight. Starlight or Midnight? I'm not sure. It said Starlight on the front of the book, but um, this might go in one of my horse journals. I also love old textbooks, uh, old children's textbooks especially. Grade 5, Our English Language. Look at this cover. It's dirty. It's um, not without it's uh, been well used, but that's okay. This, I, Randy Neitzman, I can't quite read that. Um, Wall Lake, Iowa. By Matilda Bailey, Marceline Barnes, and Edna Horrocks. Look at that. And it is 1956. I, sorry the pages like this. Well, we'll get there. The colors. Oh no. Looks like some dogs came to class. You can see some kids have written on it and drawn on it, but I think that just adds to the character, right? Oh, that little boy got bucked off. I may have seen this happen to my oldest grandchild. Once or twice, I really don't want to ever see that again, but it does happen. Animals are animals. They get scooped by different things. Um, I look at, look at that picture. Wow. I, I find these kinds of books just fascinating. Old property originally of Sex City Public Schools. Sex City is another town in Iowa. The handwritten letters. How to use a dictionary. There's something about, looks like Abe Lincoln. There's that. Here is another children's encyclopedia. Look at those pigs or hogs. Um, this is volume six like the word might be F, Fables, 1970 is the copyright. Again, look at the, look at the pictures. Who makes things? This book is a little blurry. By, by the way, it isn't just, it isn't just me. Look at that horse um, getting shooed. Kittens are watching. The farm on third floor. It looks like they're growing some vegetables from seeds. Looks like a fairy. That's what I would call it. The blinking bug. Fireflies or lightning bugs, depending what part of the country you're from. Look at those gorgeous flowers. More about flowers. The first flight. Just thought that was so much fun. And then, To My Daughter with Love, a mother's memory book, and this is by Donna Green. Uh, look at that gorgeous, gorgeous photo. And it's, it's the, the jacket of the book, so that could be cut out if you wanted to. Um, oops, I'm stuck in the quilt there. This reminds me that but look at this illustration. 
also things that I've been wanting to do forever, like this, is to um, fill in something like this for my, my kids and, and grandkids, and I've not done it. Um, speaking of regrets, that is probably one of my regrets, and one of my other regrets is that I didn't ask my parents and grandparents and my husband's parents and grandparents some of these questions and now they're all no longer with us and um, it's kind of sad and I think that's part of what junk journaling and scrapbooking and crafting is about is to tell our stories, uh, our stories, because um, I think we forget to tell our own stories. Um, when I scrapbook, it's it's usually for my kids or grandkids or for a particular event. And I've really never done a scrapbook about me or a scrapbook about my husband. Um, haven't asked these kinds of questions. Words that still ring in my ear. How would I describe her special place? What did what we did there together? Look at that grandmother, great grandmother. That maybe is a great grandmother. Um, again, talking about my school days, what I did after school, who were my best friends. Look at these illustrations. Who were who was my first boyfriend? What was my first job? So important for us to tell those stories, right? Um, with that, I think I'm going to end this video so it doesn't get too long. Please hit subscribe. I will get better, I promise. I'll get better as I go. Thank you again for subscribing, for your time and attention. And I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, your week, and your year. Take care. Bye-bye.